Pittsburgh is probably my least favorite for sure. Yeah, they're obnoxious. Welcome back to yet another Buffalo Bills pregame. Uh, I'm your host, Randy, our analyst, Dan, is back and returning from his long uh, journey through the desert. Sean is right back here in person for the first time in six years. Glad to see you, buddy. You haven't aged a day. No, I don't age. <laughs> Thank God. Um, congratulations to the Buffalo Bills. We have made the playoffs. And since you're the back after your long time away, let's talk about the Dolphins game Uh when did you stop being stressed out? I mean, they were dominating the whole game, and they just, you know, Josh is throwing picks. It was 14-7. to 7. I mean, my mom was like, oh, they're going to lose. I'm like, it's 14-7. to 7. I mean, come on. Like, they're dominating. Them. Like, I'm not that worried. Like, they're going to pull through. I was with you. I didn't feel a whole lot of tension, and I think the fact that we'd already earned our playoff spot and made the whole first two-thirds of that game way more palatable. Yeah. Um, so I think that made it a lot easier. Um, what will, like, in five years, what do you think, looking back on that Week 17 game, you'll remember most about the Bills-Miami matchup? I think it's got to be the punt return, um, you know, that they brought back for a touchdown. Um, you know, I, I think the Bills definitely, they dominated throughout the game. They definitely seemed like the better team, but... I, even I started to get a little worried, you know, maybe they weren't going to pull it out. But after that punt return, I think that changed everything. I think there was no way the Bills could have lost after that. The Miami offense certainly had trouble, like, putting together any amount of momentum after that fact. So it was a game changer, without a doubt. Uh, but looking forward, we have now the number two spot. We uh, Assuming victory in the first week, we have two home games at the very least in our future. Uh, and also, no number seven seed has ever won in the NFL playoffs to date. That being said, in the same spot, number two, we have struggled against the Colts and the Dolphins. Historically, Dan, I'll come back to you right away. Um, is this another tough game for the Bills in a number two uh, seed? Or is this going to be another easy victory for another over another number seven team uh, that has yet to win in the current NFL playoff structure. You know, I think once you make the playoffs, every game is, is going to be tough. You know, every team deserves to make it, obviously. And, uh, you know, so every game is, it's, you know, it's not going to be, uh, you know, it's not going to be a gimme. But out of all the teams, all, all the playoff teams in the AFC, I think the team that you want to play, the, the least talented, I think, is definitely Pittsburgh. So I think, you know, we should definitely handle Pittsburgh pretty easily. Sean, looking at you uh, real quick, McDermott and Tomlin, the head coaches, uh, former two teammates at William & Mary, uh, both P Pittsburgh and Buffalo throughout McDermott's tenure as a head coach have been uh, top tier of their respective divisions, um, but the Bills have still had a 3-1 and one record and head-to-head -head matchups. Do you think the familiarity of the head coaches with one another plays into a playoff game whatsoever? Yeah, I think whenever you play the Steelers, I mean, they lost to him, I think, uh, three or four years ago, like the first game of the season. So, you know, you know, obviously they're, they're that familiarity can, can play for either way. Either, but Sean just, he tends to, you know, use that to his advantage eventually. And when you have an elite quarterback like Josh, I mean, come on. I mean, that's really what this game's about. I mean, Josh is just playing out of his mind the last five games. And, you know, even though he's been throwing picks, you know, he's just been getting it done. And that's what it matters. When you look at the game in terms of the quarterback matchup, Josh Allen versus a quarterback that was third on the depth chart on his team not so many games ago. It just certainly makes it feel like an unbalanced matchup for sure. Um, much like the Bills, uh, Pittsburgh fired their offensive coordinator partway through the season, Matt Canada. Uh, shortly thereafter, their starting quarterback, Trubisky, was benched in lieu for Mason Rudolph. Um, out of those two factors, replacing the offensive coordinator or replacing the quarterback, which do you think has a like more of an effect on the three and zero record they've had ever since? I mean, I think you see with the Bills as well. Like you know, offensive coordinators make a huge deal. So I think it's the offensive coordinator for sure. I mean, it really makes a difference. You know, the positions you're putting your players in, and you, like I said, you see that with the Bills as well. Like you know, the Bills still had a top defense or top offense with. Uh, Ken Dorsey is their, their coordinator, 
but they weren't getting it done, you know, even though they were still a top team in the league for as far as production. So, you know, same thing there. Switch that coordinator, puts them in different situations, and, you know, I think it makes a difference. Uh, Dan, turning to you, the Bills just shut down one of the top performing offenses, the Miami Dolphins. Um, what if there is going to be any weakness of the Bills' defense exposed by Pittsburgh, like what would it take for Pittsburgh to take advantage of the Bills' defense considering the way they've been playing? Um, you know, I think Pittsburgh really is not a threat whatsoever in the passing game. You know, whether it's Kenny Pickett, Mason Rudolph, uh, Mitch Trubisky, none of them really seem like they really have made a difference and they haven't really done anything too crazy. So I, I expect the Bills to shut that down. Um, you know, you don't want to... Najee Harris to get running though, so I definitely think you're going to want to stop that uh, that run game. And I do think that the uh, Steelers do like to use their tight ends, so you know, possibly try and shut down Pat Fryer move. And a good rush on the quarterback will probably neg negate a lot of that advantage as well. So look for the Bills to continue a, a high pressure style uh, as they did against Miami. Um, on the other side of the ball, uh, Pittsburgh has proven susceptible to the uh, pass on their defensive side of the ball. Uh, but going in a similar situation against the Chargers, who were ranked 30th against the pass when we faced them, uh, the Bills came out in a pass-heavy offense and seemed to struggle. Uh, what do, can the Bills do different against the Pittsburgh to uh, make sure that they don't have the same struggles when they try to go pass heavy? Uh, I, I definitely think it'll be interesting to see, you know, if T.J. Watt ends up playing. I think that's going to be a huge factor. You know, if he's out, you know, he's one of the best, biggest playmakers on that defense. Um, you know, I do think that Josh, I'm okay with him th continuing to try and throw the ball because, you know, I even though he does, you know, Occasionally have the bonehead of throw and throw an interception. Um, he just makes plays, and uh, you know, even that interception that you know where Gabe Davis tripped in the end zone on against the Dolphins. I mean, it ended up being better because that was fourth down anyways. So uh, you know, I'm definitely don't have a problem with the Bills throwing the ball a lot and uh, you know working that out. Uh, T.J. Watt's injury was mentioned. Uh, huge deficit to the Steelers if he is out. It would seem the biggest uh, injury to the Bills right now might be Gabe Davis. Uh, Sean, do you think this is classic addition by subtraction? His replacements have been playing very well. Uh, if Gabe Davis is absent, is that a glaring absence on the Bills' depth chart? Definitely not. I mean, you've seen him be not in sync with Josh, you know, almost all season. And, you know, Josh has had even other picks and, and missed throws just because they haven't been on the same page. You know, he gets those long down the field um, catches at times. But, you know, and he's a really good blocker, obviously, as well. But, you know, I, I think, you know, honestly, we saw it yesterday. We saw it in the last game. Like, you know, I just think he's been off. I don't think they're going to re-sign him. And I think Hartfield, or, um, Hardy and Sherfield are going to, you know, come through for us. And uh, it's going to snow in that game, too. So I'm looking for a lot of, you know, short yardage back. Or you know, get the running back involved, short throws, just that type of stuff. So yeah, I think I don't really think that Gabe Davis being out really affects him too much. Snow is mentioned. Do you see weather being a factor in this game against Pittsburgh? Um, it'll certainly. I think it'll certainly be a factor. I think it, you know the Bills definitely seemed like they struggled and were not playing as well as they could have last year in the playoffs against the Bengals. It seemed like the Bengals were much more prepared for the snow. Um, so we'll see what the forecast is. Obviously, we don't know if it'll snow or not um, from right now on Monday. But uh, I think that will definitely play a role. Well, Pittsburgh travels well. So either way, it's going to be exciting in the stadium with or without snow. Uh, and I'm super excited. I will choose the Bills to win at an awesome game, 30-17. to Dan, what do you think? Um, I'm going to go with the Bills as well. Um, <laughs> I... Score prediction, I'll say 28 to 13. Yeah, who would have thought we'd ask for that? All right, Sean, <laughs> it's been some years. Dush off the prediction muscles. What do you think? Uh, Bill's 30-20. Yeah, all right. Well, we'll have to use the first beep we've used in a long time, but what matters the most is the Bills are going to win this game, which means we will be back right here at Buffalo Bills pregame to discuss the division playoff matchup. Thank you so much for watching yet another Buffalo Bills pregame episode. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll be back real soon. Thank you. And go Bills! Woo!